on Dana Bash in Washington, where the state of our union is thankful. Thankful that an American detained in a Russian penal colony is finally home. You're looking at new pictures of Brittany Griner, the WNBA superstar who touched down on American soil early Friday morning. She reunited with her wife, Sherelle, and was taken immediately for a medical evaluation. President Biden celebrated her return and now faces questions about his decision to trade convicted, convicted Russian arms dealer Victor Boot in exchange for the WNBA star. And the American left behind in Russia, Paul Whelan, who has been held prisoner there for nearly four years. My guest now is working to free Whelan and dozens of Americans held hostage in other foreign nations, and he has a pretty good track record. Special envoy, special presidential envoy, I should say, for hostage affairs, Roger Carstens, helped secure Griner's release and was there to greet her and bring her home. Thank you so much for joining me uh, this morning. What uh, an ordeal and what a saga. Let's start with the sort of the personal. You flew to the to UAE, you welcomed her on the tarmac. Um, what was the moment like for both of you and what was it like for her more specifically? Uh, it's always kind of a, uh, an exciting moment when you jump on the other uh, country's plane and walk up to an, a person, in this case, Brittany. And I'll tell you what I told her. I said, uh, Brittany, my name is Ambassador Roger Carstens. I'm with the U.S. Department of State. I'm be and on behalf of the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, I'm here to take you home. Mm. And at that moment, I think uh, every person finally starts to realize that it's going to happen. It's setting in. Certainly, Brittany felt that way. And at that point, we have to go through a little more of the choreography to get her on the plane. It usually takes about three minutes. But here's what I wouldn't mind telling you. When she finally got onto the U.S. plane, I said, Brittany, you must have been through a lot over the last 10 months. Uh, here's your seat. Please feel free to decompress. We'll give you your space. And she said, oh, no, I've been in prison for 10 months now listening to Russian. I want to talk. But first of all, who are these guys? And she moved right past me and went to every member on that crew, looked them in the eyes, shook their hands, and asked about them, got their names, making a personal connection with them. It was really amazing. And then later on, on an 18-hour flight, she probably spent 12 hours just, just talking. We talked about everything under the sun, and I was left with the impression that this is an intelligent, passionate, compassionate, humble, interesting person, a patriotic person, but above all, authentic. Uh, I, I, I hate the fact that I had to meet her in this manner, but I actually felt blessed having had a chance to get to know her. You said that she wanted to talk. Did she talk specifically about the experience she in did. a Russian penal colony? She did. Uh, I'd hate to steal her thunder because it, it's her story to tell, but uh, she, she spoke at length about what it was like to go undergo that 10-month uh, ordeal. Just going back to the first thing you said, when you shook her hand and you said that you were there to take her home, did she know, obviously she was on a plane, mm -hmm. so she knew something was happening. Did she know for sure she was being freed before that moment? At that point, she did. Okay. Um, the, the Russians, just like the United States, has to go through certain administrative procedures. Yeah. At a certain point, it uh, kind of becomes evident that something ha something's happening. And then usually uh, when the Russians pick up someone from their prison cell, in this case, Brittany, they give her a sense that she's going home that day. What's that like to be the person to shake someone's hand and welcome them? back to America after yeah. they've been wrongly held? It, it's humbling. Um, it, it, I'm very grateful that uh, President Biden allows me a chance to do this job. Uh, it's also a painful job. Uh, so when you get this chance to shake someone's hands, it's one of those rare moments that you get to celebrate a victory. But know this, even as we're welcoming someone home, we still have work to do. So as I'm shaking Brittany's hands and we're taking to the aircraft and having this great conversation, my brain's already thinking about Paul Whelan. Mm -hmm. What can we do to get him back? What's our next move? What's the strategy? How can we adapt? And I want to ask you that in one second, just quickly. How's her physical health? Um, she, she looks great. I mean, she was uh, full of energy, looked fantastic. She's uh, in Fort Sam Houston right now undergoing some, some medical evaluations, but she seems to be just fine. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Paul Whelan. Mm -hmm. What options realistically do you have to bring him home? I would love to tell you about it because to me they're very exciting and interesting, but we have to, in these negotiations, because they're ongoing, we usually have to keep our cards close to our chest. But are there cards? Uh, uh, there, there's always cards. Uh, the options are always being evaluated. Uh, they, we have to adapt at times. Uh, but here's the thing I'd like to leave you with. Uh, we have an ongoing open dialogue with the Russians, and we have the commitment of this president and my office, for certainly, to bring Paul Whelan home. To my mind, and I talked to Paul, by the way, I may, I, I may not have mentioned this, but I talked to him on Friday the day after the swap. And here's what I told him. I said, Paul, you have the commitment of this president, the president's focused, the secretary of state's focused, I'm certainly focused,
and we're going to bring you home. And I reminded him, I said, Paul, when you were in the Marines and I was in the Army, they always reminded you, keep the faith. And I said, keep the faith. We're coming to get you. Because I want uh, our viewers to listen to something. He actually called our mm -hmm. colleague Jennifer Hansler from the Russian prison. And here's what he said to her. I'm greatly disappointed that more has not been done to secure my release. I'm happy that Brittany is going home today and that Trevor went home when he did. But I don't understand why I'm still sitting here. What's it like to hear that? I'm guessing he said similar to you. He did. He shared his frustration. And I explained uh, him, to him that, Paul, this was a case where it was either one or none. Uh, we weren't able to get you out on this go around. We could not get the deal with the Russians. Uh, but had we not made the deal, then Brittany would not have come home. There was no opportunity to bring you home at this time. But, Paul, we're coming for you. And what do you say to people like uh, Senator Bob Menendez, who's the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, one of the president's fellow Democrats, who said that making that swap with Victor Boot was deeply disturbing. He said, we must stop inviting dictatorial and rogue regimes to use Americans overseas as bargaining chips. Um, do you, I guess, how do you respond to his argument that this sends a message to hostile countries that all they need to do is kidnap an American to get what they want? Well, I'd say that um, it's important to, to note that um, people that are held overseas are important to us. And that's kind of the uh, where I'd say I start when I look at the question morally. Was it bad to trade someone like Victor Boot? I think the question is, it's horrific to leave an American wrongfully detained in a foreign jail cell. Is it going to incentivize? Um, are there say, bad actors? Let me say this. but There are bad actors. The, it was, we used to say the, uh, the other side gets a vote. And in this case, it's hard to keep these dictators and these dictatorial governments, as uh, uh, Chairman Menendez said, from taking Americans and trying to use them as bargaining chips. But this is precisely why this summer the president signed an executive order that provides us with new tools to, to add a deterrence effect. And additionally, uh, Secretary Blinken has been working with other countries to try to create a multilateral coalition that can put this, I guess you could say this, this uh, using Americans as wrongful, wrongfully as bargaining chips, rather, to put that on the dustbin well, of history. So well, let me ask you about that, because he did sign, the president did sign an executive order. And what it does is it authorizes sanctions and visa bans mm -hmm. against people responsible for wrongly, uh, wrongfully detaining Americans. As far as we can tell, it hasn't been used. Why not? It hasn't yet. Uh, I'll say this much. Sometimes you, you might be working with the country and you might have hostages that you have to keep working out. It may not be the right time and place to use a sanctioning authority. But believe me, we're working on, on target packages right now. It's something that we discuss all the time. And it's not going to be too long before you see something rolled out. Well, for example, the, uh, there's an African Leaders Summit here in Washington uh, coming up. The State Department says that the uh, president of Rwanda is wrongly, wrongfully detaining an American. Will it be used then? These are, these are decisions that we're constantly reevaluating and talking about. I'd hate to get into future uh, talks about that because these are things that are constantly under uh, negotiation. And I'll just leave it at that, if I may. I, I want to ask about just the other families and the other hostages mm -hmm. who are out there or people who are wrong, wrongfully detained. The James Foley Foundation says that there are at least 60 Americans uh, wrongfully detained. One of them is Austin Tice, who is a, a former a, a journalist and a former Marine. He was kidnapped in Syria more than a year ago. I know you personally have traveled to Syria. Any update on his situation? Is he possibly going to come home soon? We're still working on it. But, uh, again, hate to get into negotiations and things that we're currently doing. But uh, as I've often told Deborah Tice, his mother, uh, I'm optimistic. I think there are always paths forward that allow us to, to get an opportunity to bring someone like Austin home. Well, you have uh, helped bring home 15 Americans who were wrongfully detained or held hostage in nine months. Uh, that's a pretty good track record. And we thank you so much for your service and for coming on and telling the story. Thank you for having me on today. Thank Appreciate you, Mr. It. Thank Master. you.